Welcome to Beacon of Speech. I'm Fred Hunt. That's Ted Coley. Hey, Ted Coley. How are you doing today? Okay. How are you doing? I feel like a woman. It's like, right when I hit the button, I'm like, I feel so fat. <laughs> See? Se sexual harassment right there. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was using explicit. Um, welcome to Beacon of Speech. What is Beacon of Speech? Beacon of Speech is under constant... Oh, f f I already messed up the opening. Should we restart? No, we're not going to restart. What is Beacon of Speech? <laughs> Beacon of Speech is free speech is under constant assault in America today. The problem is it's coming from two places. It's very hard to fight from the left PC madness, from the right corporations. Do you want to know why I'm so distracted? Last week I had to apologize to Ted Coley twice. Twice I had to apologize to Ted Coley. He, uh, he um, accepted my apology for the first thing right away. Second thing, begrudgingly he accepted, and then he, I had to re-apologize to him after the show. Right? I'm right now, really so. Do you remember what the second thing was? We were talking about Trump, right? Mm -hmm. Because I was bashing on Trump. Mm -hmm. Now, I am going to start breaking out in hives and itching all over. Because Ted Coley continues to be right. I continue to be wrong. Donald Trump did something so awesome and magnanimous. Is that the right word? Magnanimous? Mag magnanimous. That is, I... Is that right? Yes. I had to come on the air and give him credit... Because somebody was just a flat-out ungrateful bastard to Donald Trump this week and did not deserve it. Okay? Do you know what Donald Trump did that was so awesome that I am ready to give you kudos for voting for him? Um, is this getting those three basketball players out of... Excellent. You nailed it. Donald Trump got out three UCLA basketball players. They were in China for an exhibition game. They were shoplifting. Okay? Now, Ted Coley, what happens when you're in North Korea and you shoplift? Uh, you probably eventually end up dead. Yeah. You get 20 years in a North Korean prison. Or if you tear down a poster, you get, you get executed. Okay? Just three months ago, a college student in North Korea was returned in a vegetative state after his 15-year... You remember talking about that uh -huh. on Beacon of Speech? Yep. That was a disgrace. A disgrace. And I don't remember the student's name, but it was a disgrace. Absolutely. Uh, Warren, Warren Beer. Otto Warren Beer? Yep. Exactly. I was going to say I would recognize if I heard it. Donald Trump, I'm convinced that Donald Trump got that kid out of there because I think that Kim Jong-un was afraid if he died in custody that America would attack him. Okay? I think he was that afraid of Trump. Now... Granted, he sent him back in a vegetative state, but yeah. he's, uh, I don't know what happened, you know, Kim Jong-un's like, I don't know what happened to that kid, it must have been a uh, flight, you know, and you, you know it was from his imprisonment. Yeah. So, it, it, that was just a flat out lie, right? But, so in China, they arrest these, these college kids for um, shoplifting, and they, they admitted they did it, Right? You know, youthful indiscretion. You remember mm. when you used to shoplift in college, Ted? And even, not college, but you know, you went to college briefly when you were college age, right? Did you know better than to shoplift in a communist country when you were 18 years old? So these guys are literally... I wonder, you know what I wonder? I wonder if they've ever shoplifted here. Oh, tsh. Wouldn't it be funny if they didn't? If they wait until they no, go to I a communist country? To... I guarantee you that the, the one kid shoplifted. While he was here. I don't know about the other two. Okay. But you're right. It would be funny. Okay. But one of the three, one of the three students from UCLA, they, as soon as Trump got him out, they all had a press conference and they gave lukewarm thanks. Like, thanks, President <laughs> Trump. Thank you. Yes. You know, like, you know, when you get twisted by the ear and you're like, you'll say, yeah. you're sorry. They're like, we're sorry we shoplifted in China. Right? And Donald Trump's like, you're welcome. You know, you're citizens, you're young men, you got your whole future in front of you. Very, very awesome of Donald Trump, right? Can't say enough good things about Donald Trump for getting the kids out. Now, one of the kids... Like a, almost like a father figure. Almost like a father figure. Now, right now, if you lift up my shirt, you'd see hives, because yeah. I'm like, I can't take being nice to Donald Trump. Okay, but he did the right thing, and he... He made sure those kids did not die in China. Okay? Now, 
The father of one of the three players is LeVar Ball. LeVar do you know who LeVar Ball is? LeVar Burton. <laughs> LeVar Ball. Do you know who LeVar Ball is? LeVar Ball has three sons. One's in uh, playing for the Lakers, one goes to UCLA, and one goes to a private high school. Wow. Right? And he's like Todd Marinovich's uh, dad, who says, I'm going to make me some basketball players, and I'm going to coach them up all the way to the pros. Right? He's an a-hole... Um, extraordinaire. Yeah, a-hole extraordinaire. <laughs> His most famous statement is he does not want his sons to sign with Nike or Adidas or Reebok unless they offer the three of them a billion dollars because that's how much his three sons are worth, okay? So you know what kind of a-hole you're dealing with, okay? Now, I could tell you the 50 other horrible things he said, but me and you are from the old school. We talk about it all the time. Could you ever imagine... Your dad going in front of a microphone and saying, my boy Ted and my other boys, we won't throw your brothers mm -hmm. under the bus, okay? They will not sign any contracts with your country, <laughs> uh, with your company, unless you offer them a billion dollars. Could you see your dad? No. Now, your dad, could you see him saying, listen, for $10,000, you could have all three of them and you could have them do hard labor <laughs> over in the gravel pits right down the street. Could you see your dad saying that? Right? So that's why this LeVar Ball, again, I'm not going to go into the 50 other things he said. You're just, you're just jealous. Yeah, yeah, again, I'm the jealous one. Okay? Well, because your dad wouldn't do that. Well, yeah, my dad wouldn't do that. Your dad wouldn't do that. If anything, we're jealous of LeVar Ball. LeVar Burton. Uh, so what does... Uh, what's his last... Ball? Yeah, LeVar... I wrote it down. LeVar Ball. Yeah. So, what does LeVar Ball say to Donald Trump after his son said, Thank you, President Trump, for getting us out of China. What does... That, that's the father of... The father one of, of the... one of the three UCLA athletes. Um... I don't know. And again, we're not dealing with an average dad. We're we're dealing with Todd, basically Todd Marinovich's dad. Um, I'm sure it was something um, not complimentary. He said Trump didn't do anything. He doesn't need to go around hogging credit for <laughs> everything good that happens in America. That Donald Trump literally did nothing. Now, because LeVar Ball likes to go to Twitter and say crap like this all the time, who do you think saw... The Donald Trump didn't do anything comment on Twitter. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump replied right before he went on air, I should have left the boys in China. <laughs> okay? And, again, it's making me itch. I'm breaking out all over. But Donald Trump is right. Because at some point, you have, even, even LeVar Ball, even if he hates Donald Trump, even if he doesn't agree with his politics, LeVar Ball has to say... Thank you, President Trump, for getting my son out of prison. He <laughs> has to at least say that, or else he's the biggest jackass in the world, which he has already proven he's in the top ten jackasses in the world. Every time he opens his mouth, he moves up the jackass list. And honestly... With his jackassian behavior. Yeah, with his jackassian behavior. And I honestly can't think of anybody today who's a bigger jackass, like... I could think of obscure people that you don't know, and you could probably think of people that you know personally, but in the public realm where everything's so politically correct right now and you can't say anything, I can't think of anybody who's a bigger jackass right now than LeVar Ball, right? And then he didn't even just say, you know, Donald Trump didn't get my son out of China when he did. He's like, you know, Donald Trump runs around saying he does stuff, you know, just because you're the president. I'm like, not only did he say it, but then he, like, he's like doubling down, saying, oh, Trump's a horrible president. Oh, my God. If I was Donald Trump, Donald Trump wants to take people, round them up, and export them from the United States if they're not citizens, right? What's to say Donald Trump doesn't say, okay, China, we are, go we are going to let you press charges against LeVar Ball's son, and we are going to extradite your son. <laughs> LeVar Ball's son. Because it's within his rights. Yeah. China could say, we want these three boys, uh, I, I use the correct word, but it's not expedited. 
It's uh, extradited. Extradited. We want him extradited. <clears throat> Donald Trump can say, "Okay, we're going to extradite him." And uh, what's the punishment for uh, shoplifting? Five years. Okay, Chinese court. Have fun. It is not too late for Donald Trump to screw up that kid's whole life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it goes back to the, you know, we were talking a couple weeks ago about how Bernie Kosar basically got screwed by his dad, you know, in the meeting with, uh, with Lerner. Mm -hmm. And it's like, LeVar Bar Ball can keep talking. And I hope Donald Trump does say, okay, we're going to extradite him. We're actually, we're going to sign a, we're gonna sign a treaty with China. And again, he did the right thing. And even if you hate Donald Trump, you have to at least give him his props for doing the right mm -hmm. thing and getting those kids out of jail. He didn't say, what am I going to do politically or what, you know, what is my end game? He said, I'm not going to let those poor kids sit in a Chinese prison. Yeah, some people make it really hard on other people to do the right thing. Right. And then you wonder why people don't do the right yeah. thing. Well, you know, I did a political survey and it doesn't really do me any good. Donald Trump did the right thing. He didn't, he didn't say, well, how is this going to help politically? How is this, you know, he just said, I don't think kids should be in Chinese prison. Out you come. You know, now. I mean, there's there's enough things going against everybody to do the right thing to begin with. Right. And then you got people who will make it harder on you if you do the right thing. Right. It's like, so what are the odds that people are going to do the right thing? Yeah. And that's the whole thing. People voted for Trump because, right or wrong, he did something. Right? He could have come out and said, screw those kids, I'm going to leave them in China. And people have been like, oh, Donald Trump... At some point, he can't do anything right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And in this case, he should get credit where credit is due. I did not vote for Trump, and if he was up for election tomorrow, I wouldn't vote for him either. Now, what else did Donald Trump say on Twitter that got him into a lot of trouble? Do you know what he said to Hillary Clinton this week? Did you see that on the news? Um, that she's like a, a sore loser. She's a sore loser, but... He said, I'm going to give you another chance. I encourage you to run in 2020. <laughs> yeah, I figured you'd get a kick out of that. So on Twitter, he says Hillary Clinton. Now, Donald Trump thinks by the time 2020 rolls around that Clinton is going to dig herself such a deep hole that he will crush her. Yeah. I think Donald Trump said this calculate. He did this in a calculated way because he would like to run against Hillary because I think she has just tarnished all of her legacy since she lost. Oh, I, I didn't really lose. It's not my fault. It's Biden's fault. It's that guy's fault. You know, uh, my limo driver's fault. It's all their fault. It's not my fault. I'm awesome. Mm -hmm. And then, you you know, we went through the whole beacon of speech where everybody was attacking her. And she's like, oh, no, no, they, they don't know the real me. Well, if the people in the Democrat Party don't know the real you, who knows? Mm -hmm. You know? And today, I just read an article, I believe it was the New York Times, they said that all these people, you know, we were talking about the sexual harassment, they said a bunch of Democrats are coming out and saying, yeah, we probably shouldn't have swept all the bad stuff that Clinton did under the rug. All that vast right-wing conspiracy, yeah, we probably should, way out, 20 years after the mm -hmm. fact. Yeah, literally. And... So now she has the baggage of a different climate. And now a lot of people are like saying, well, maybe Clinton should apologize. Well, no, too late, too late now. It was 20 years ago. He, he could have done the right thing in the 90s. Mm -hmm. He had no interest in that. Now that all the Clinton's political careers are over, now they want apologies. It's like, no, too late. And so... Trump is very smart in the way that he's goading Hillary, saying, yeah, you should run, 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 run. <laughs> if you put up, and I'm telling you now, if you put up Trump versus Biden, Trump versus Oprah, Trump versus, um, who's another Democrat? Uh, Who might run? Uh, who's uh, Obama's wife? Uh, Michelle. Michelle. Michelle runs. I guarantee you, if you took a poll today that Trump would do best against Hillary Clinton... Trump wants that matchup. He wants the eight years. He want so he is totally trying to hook them, and they're like they're they're taking it hook and line. Maybe we will run in twenty twenty, and everybody else is like, no. You know, you might as well bring at that point. You might as well bring back Al Gore. 
You know what yeah. I mean? Hillary Clinton is done. You In politics, you never say you're done, done. But Hillary Clinton's done, especially after this article about Bill Clinton apologizing to people. Now, today, and I'm not going to hold you to this, right? But if you had the vote, Hillary Clinton versus um, Donald Trump in 2020, you would not change your mind. You would not vote for Hillary Clinton, would you? No, I, I would not vote for Hillary Clinton. And I would not vote for Hillary Clinton either. Because I don't know who, uh, Gary Johnson says he's not running, so we're going to see who's, I don't know if I can vote for Jill Stein. <laughs> I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can eat that. Gary right. Johnson said he's not running. Yeah, Gary Johnson said there's more to life than running for president. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And then the other two in the election, the winner and the loser, can't stop talking about the 2020 election. I'm, not, I'm sorry, the 2016 election. And Gary Johnson's like, yeah, see ya. <laughs> I mean, he literally like dropped the mic and said, done. And even when Jill Stein was like, no, 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 we're going to keep counting. Gary Johnson's like, I'm done. <laughs> now, do you want to hear more awesome stuff about Donald Trump? Mm -hmm. Donald Trump keeps saying, and I'm wearing my American flag hat, okay? He keeps saying that people need to um, respect the flag and they need to stand for a national anthem. And we all know what's going on in the NFL, and it kind of bled over a little bit in the hockey. And then the NBA commissioner said, we ain't going to do that because we ain't going to have our ratings drop 20%, right? And again, he didn't say, we're going to do the right thing. He said, we're not going to have our ratings 20% And then I think he sent a personal email to, like, LeBron and all the big guys and said, this is why we're not kneeling. Do you like money? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, fundamentally, as a libertarian... I'm not all for strong-arming people and uh, doing uh, the national anthem, right? If you want to, you know, you should show respect to the veterans, you should do this. But once you make people do it, once I take your arm, twist it behind your back, and say, you will stand for the anthem or else you're going to jail, you are in dangerous territory. Mm -hmm. You should do it. But you cannot legislate it. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. Some idiot on YouTube went and he went to uc berkeley the home of free speech okay and i read this on let me see if i got this right i want to make sure i put the right website down dun, 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 dun. oh crap i think i erased the website i erased the website it was on um because i i i accidentally printed over it some YouTuber went out, he took an American flag, and he went to UC Berkeley, the home of free speech, and people were yelling at him, saying, don't bring that flag around here, do you know what that represents, that represents repression, and he said, about half the people said, thank you for being brave enough to show the flag, and about half the people said, that is a sign of white supremacy, just idiotic statements, mm -hmm. right? So the guy said, okay, next week he went right back to UC Berkeley, and guess what flag he was holding in his hand? Um, a Nazi flag? He is holding a ISIS flag. Yeah. And he said that 90% of the people just ignored him like he didn't exist, <laughs> and 10% of the people said, we're, we're proud that you are showing bravery and supporting the Muslim community. Okay. So he said he actually got more comment, negative comments. He got more positive comments for the American flag, right? He said it was about 50-50. But he said with the ISIS flag, he actually got more negative comments for showing the American flag on the UC Berkeley campus. Does that make sense what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah, yeah. Because he said when he showed the ISIS flag, people just ignored him. Like, whatever. Right? Mm -hmm. So he said he didn't get any negative comments. He goes, now you can interpret it 90% were negative because they didn't say anything. He goes, but they didn't say, screw ISIS, we're going to kill them. He goes, technically, we're at war with ISIS, right? Because we are in Iraq and we, we're in Syria. And he goes, we're at war with them. Nobody's coming up to me when I'm showing the ISIS flag going USA, USA. And he goes, now, again, I specifically picked UC Berkeley. You know, I didn't pick uh, USC. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, are you surprised by this YouTuber's results? By this what? By his results. By what he says happened. No. And he said it wasn't scientific. But I wasn't surprised by it either because I keep reading 
about free speech being under attack on college campuses. And again, they want to shut down your speech. They want to say whatever outlandish thing they want to say. Excuse me. I remember, I think I was going to Cleveland State. I think it was around the early 90s. And somebody painted a picture of Mary. And the picture of Mary was painted not with paint. Well, it was with paint, but it was half paint and half feces. And it was called Piss Christ, I believe was the name of the picture. Right? And all these right-wing groups said, you can't paint a picture of Mary using feces. Mm -hmm. And everybody on the left said, we should be allowed to say anything we want. Freedom of speech, freedom of speech, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. Right? And eventually, there was enough backlash... Okay, now, today, the problem is that the left is going around screaming freedom of speech, freedom of speech. We want to be able to, we want to be able to paint piss Christ, but you don't get to say anything about the flag, religion, mm -hmm. institutions, right? All the things that Rush Limbaugh talks about. And again, we are not a right-wing show. We are, Beacon of Speech is not... We are about the left, we are about the right, we are about freedom of speech with only extreme restrictions on the far left and the far right, which we've already talked about, right? Mm -hmm. But nobody wants, everybody gets in their little clicks and nobody wants to say anything. Everybody wants to say their own point of view and nobody wants to hear that other point of view. I mean, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over again. <laughs> Which brings oh, that's us... that's what everybody does. But it seems like it's more extreme now than when I was younger. It seems to be getting worse and yeah. worse and worse. Well, I, I was actually saying yesterday, I said everything now is about conflict and, right. you know, controversy. Right. And you can't say you don't like anything anymore. You know, I was showing Ted a video of an, uh, the emo rapper Lil Peep who died this week. And R.I.P. Low Peep, okay? But I came out in Beacon of Speech and said I liked his video. I liked his most popular video, right? And I liked the style of it. I like, as an independent filmmaker, <laughs> I really liked the style of his video. But if you strip it down and you take the video away and you only listen to the music, the music is horrible. It is the worst music you could ever hear. Now you'll be like, well, Fred, you're old. Look, see that gray hair? And look, see that gray hair right there? <laughs> you and Ted are not music fans. The problem is, is that they don't make music anymore. Now, Ted, after we went off air, Ted pointed out, he said, there's no bands anymore. There's no bands making rock and roll, right? There's no rock and roll records. Now, even if there's no rock and roll, there should be a next thing. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm yeah. saying? You know, uh, in the 70s or 80s, it was classic rock, and then it went to, you know, uh, big hair, hair metal, mm -hmm. and then... Um, and then grunge. Grunge, and then hair, uh, new metal. I said hair metal. And then new metal. And then there's always some other variation of rock and roll that comes next. What's variation now? There is no variation. It's all pop or country. And all this, this uh, emo rap stuff, it's another deviation of just pop music. And it, there's no, like, uh, richness or soul to it. And granted, don't get me wrong, it's sad that he died of a drug overdose, and he is speaking to a certain segment of the population, but it's, it's manufactured. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's like, where are the guys in the clubs grinding it out, you know, in the van? Now they'd be like, oh, the little peak grinded. I am not. <laughs> well, there are, you know, there are bands doing that, but they're never going to get anywhere. Yeah. Because there's no big label to get behind them. Yeah. There's no money to be in it. And like I said, there's no one, prom like I said, promoting rock and roll. After the show, like I said, me and Ted were looking at, you know, local punk band in Michigan. I said, these guys are getting as many hits as Beacon of Speech. And I felt really bad for them. Because they had a ton of talent. Their name, it's the, the band's called The Plurals. Well, you know what else is funny? Music used to be about, you know, you were singing about somebody else or, or something else. Right. Now everything is 
turned inward. Yeah. It's like everybody is their own universe. Right. But again, and country music is horrible. And like I said, where is where is the, the soul, per se? You know what I mean? And they're like, well, you didn't hear what little peep was saying. Oh, no, I listened to that video three times in case I missed something. They're like, you're not dealing with a dick. <sighs> Listen, one of my favorite songs in the 90s was a song by Buck Cherry. And it was called Cocaine, right? No, it was called Lit Up. But they were singing about cocaine. It was talking about getting Is out. It, are, are they the ones that did, what was it, Save Tonight? Or is no, that the name no, of that song? No, no. Buck Cherry, you, you don't know anything about Buck Cherry. Yeah. Buck Cherry sang about cocaine, and it was one of the best rock songs ever written. Okay? And the song's called Lit Up. And the whole song is, let's get baked on cocaine, <laughs> and let's just get high until we pass out and are on the brink of death. <laughs> That's the, that's the whole song. I never did cocaine in my life, but that was a great song. Okay? I didn't have to do cocaine and get baked out of my skull to understand what a great song that song was by Buck Cherry. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I wasn't young. I wasn't 17 when I came out. I was like 35. Okay? It, it wasn't like youthful indiscretions. You know, like, uh, they're like, oh, Bill Clinton had youthful indiscretions. Yeah, in his mid-40s. He was hooking up with <laughs> his youthful indiscretions in his 40s. So, the whole point is, is that Little Peep was horrible, okay? I'll probably get assassinated by my, one of my three listeners. and get assassinated <laughs> for saying it was horrible. Okay, we're not going to do this. Okay, pretend like that's not there. We just got an update alert, okay? But you have to be able to say, in America, I don't like Little Peep's music. And then now people are, I'm going to kill you! You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I wrote an article about it for Beacon of Speech. Luckily, nobody reads our my uh, my blog, so I'm not getting any death threats yet. But say we get popular in ten years, and somebody's like, "Fred hated Little Peep. He always spoke illio." And then next thing you know, I, I'm sorry, I said those bad things about Little Peep. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying anything about. I don't know about him personally. All I know is they said he died of a drug overdose, which apparently he had taken some drugs. In the video, there's like vials yeah, I saw of prescription drugs in his video, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about him personally. I just know he does a great job making videos. He does a horrible job singing, mm -hmm. all right? But you have to be able in the United States to say what you like, what you don't like, what you agree with, what you don't agree with, okay? And that's why I took the opportunity to pick on his music, not necessarily his personal life. Now, you can come out and say, Beacon of Speech is just pure rubbish, okay? You have to be able to say that in America. Now, Ted, would your feelings be hurt if they said it's pure rubbish, Beacon of Speech? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ted. <laughs> no. But you have to be able to, within, you know, the parameters of speaking... Yeah. To be able to have free Well, now speech. if somebody says something you don't like, you try to destroy them. Right. We're making sure Fred can't make a living. Oh, my <laughs> God. Fred can, barely Fred can barely make a living doing Beacon of Speech as it is. Like I said, I and I can't thank Ted enough for doing it with me. Right? Because sometimes, you know, I feel like, oh, I got four views. You know? And I'm like, are we going to keep going on? But I, like I said, I love doing it. I love seeing Ted. I love doing the blog. I'm convinced today more than ever that there is a niche somewhere out there. We just have to hit it. Mm -hmm. Because there's not any... It seems like everyone out there is doing the right is right or the left is correct. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Nobody's doing that. Everybody has free speech in America. Everybody's like, oh, we're two different countries. Mm -hmm. Are you in this country or are you in that country? Well, guess what? We're in the big country. You don't want to end up like Europe where there's uh, the, the Cleveland country... The country of Cincinnati, the country of Delaware, the country of uh, Dakota, where you have 50 or 60 different countries that used to be the United States. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Constitution is supposed to ensure. People are like, oh, the Constitution's 200 years old. I'm telling you, if you have 40 or 50 countries, one day China wakes up and they march down, and next thing you know, they annex. Now, people will be like, Fred, well, I'll like, we, like, I'm sure we've said this before, but the same people, if there's something they like about the Constitution, then they don't say that. Then they don't right. say, oh, it's 200 years old and was made by, you know. Yeah, old white men. Yeah. I literally just read an article right before. It was on The Blaze. I remember where I saw it. And some professor in Oregon said that people, the saying you like the wilderness is code 
for white supremacy because whenever you go out to the woods, you go out to the park, you go walk into the park, you never see any black people. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like it it it's PC correctness gone wild. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, honestly, when I'm in nature, I don't try to look at other people. I mm -hmm. just try to nod and smile so people don't murder me on the trail. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you know, you always read about that. Okay. So I do admit that I do try not to get murdered in nature. Okay, I do smile and not. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Um, da -da 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 -da. Freedom of speech. That leads us into our next uh, thing that you don't want to hear. We just had election day not that long ago. Okay. Now, when you want, you voted, correct? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what you voted for? Um, yeah, I mean, do you have anything specific in No, 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 no. I'm going to ask you some specifics about the process of voting, okay? When you pulled up to your polling place, don't tell me where it's at, did you see any signs right before you got to a polling place that said vote for X, Y, or Z? You saw a bunch of signs, yeah, right? Yeah. But once you got to the polling place, everything was clean, right? Yeah, well, I think I had to get pretty close to it before everything was clean. Right, but, but once you were in the area where you voted, it yeah. was clean, right? yeah. Now, what, and this is where I'm going with this. I remember, I think it was a thousand feet from the polling place, there was a lady, must have been about 60 years old, and her shirt said, vote for blank for school board. And she's waving, don't forget to vote for me! And I recognize her from her flyer. What's, right? uh, what's, the, what's the distance? I think it's, you can't be within a thousand feet of the polling place property and your sign cannot be... It's a thousand feet, so they can't be any they can't, closer than a thousand feet? They can't be closer to a thousand uh, feet. Oh, well, this this lady that I saw, she was she was probably... I don't know. It was... She, I don't know. It was probably like 60 feet. Ted, she might have been breaking the law. Are you sure it's a thousand feet? No, I'm not. Because I saw signs to within 50 feet... But I saw her off the property about a thousand feet off. Yes, yeah, she. This lady, and I won't. You know, I won't say there because it was just. I, school I won't say any names, right. but honest to God, she was probably. I would say fifty or sixty feet from the door. Oh well, it, it could be possible because I thought it was a thousand. I don't know what the law is. Okay, but once you get inside, there can't be signs. You can't see the thing, right? And she can't wear her shirt that says "Vote for X." For school board. She can't wear that into the polling place, you know, and then talk to all her friends and then you see her shirt, right? That is the law, okay? Now, this is where free speech gets tricky, okay? I read an article and I got a look at my outline. At Reason.com, it went all the way to the Supreme Court. A guy, probably like me, who lived in Minnesota, like me, right? He wore a shirt. Ted, you'll get a kick out of this because I've actually done Beacon of Speech in this shirt. With the snake separated into 13 mm. sections, it said, don't tread on me. Is that the 13 colonies? Yeah. Said, don't tread on me. Poll worker stopped them. Said, you cannot wear shirts with political messages into the polling place. We cannot let you vote in that shirt. He said, screw you, I'm going to take you to Supreme Court. And they're like, oh, no, oh, let me check with my boss. And he sat there, and he waited, and they called their boss, and they said, "Is he? does he have a name on it? It just said, don't tread on me. And mm -hmm. they held him up. They finally let him vote, and I think he turned his shirt inside out. I think that was their compromise. He went home, called the ACLU. He said, I'm going to take the Supreme Court. <laughs> and it went to the Supreme Court, and he won. Now... This is the country that we are living in now. See, the thing is about, like, that shirt, that's, that doesn't favor one side or the other. You know what I mean? And that was his argument. And I guess on the shirt he was wearing a pin that said, please check my voter ID. Because the guy was, he was a rabble rouser. I don't even deny it. Okay. This guy sounds like, I mean, just that, you know, don't tread on me. That sounds more like, I don't support any of these people. And that's exactly what it was. He wanted to go in and he wanted to start some trouble, right? But he thought he was going to get in trouble for wearing the pin. He didn't, get th he didn't think he was going to get in trouble for the shirt. 
you know, he he probably lays around in it what like was, I what was the What was the pin? It said, please ask for my voter ID. And you know how people are like, you can't have voter IDs? Yeah. That's discrimination. Well, yeah. how is that discrimination? Yeah. Right? Again, back to, instead of a big tent, I mean, we you want have to show your ID for almost everything else you do. Yeah. I, okay, Ted, I'm going to ask you a question, okay? Do you know, and be honest, because you might know how, do you know how to make meth? No. <laughs> if you go to Walmart and you want to buy a bottle of cold medicine... You can buy one bottle of cold medicine. If you go to Walmart and you buy two bottles of cold medicine, you have to show your ID to buy two bottles of cold medicine. Yeah. Because you might have a meth lab and they want to track you. Okay? So somehow Walmart can so track So now you. When, when you buy two bottles and they ask to see your ID, what do they do with that then? What are they, Database. They check the... A, database into the cloud. <laughs> yeah. So they check to see if your name is on there? Yeah. Now, somebody from Walmart can be like, we don't do that anymore, or we don't have the manpower, but it gets done at certain places, because I've had people buy cold medicine, get two, and then they get carded. And they're like, oh, you know, I got a sick kid, they take down your name, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it happens. So when the guy had the voter ID pinned, he never expected in his wildest dreams that they're going to make him stop him for the Don't Tread on Me shirt. And again, it's just like me. I, you can go back. At, what is this? Beacon of Speech 71? I think on two different episodes, I wore that shirt. And it's like, I said, don't try it on me shirt. It Literally, it's history. And it's not it's not the Confederate flag. It's not the woohoo, we're the Confederates. It's literally the flag of the founding of America. And once you start banning things like that, you are in real, real trouble. <laughs> Well, remember you had that that paper with the Don't Tread on Me up at work? Yeah. And Steve wanted to take it down <laughs> because he said, I think you're causing trouble. He said, what's that, suppo what's that supposed to mean? And it means Don't Tread on Me. It's uh, the thing. Well, I thought you put that up there because we we established that you were the head of the snake. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because some, what had happened is there was some trouble at work. And somebody said... Fred needs to go because he's the head of the snake. You cut off the head of the snake, <laughs> and the snake dies. But the whole point of the story was I wasn't the head of the snake. And without getting into it too much, they would, like, break certain labor laws. And then I would point it out, and then, like, we'll use Ted as an example because he's right here. And they'd be like, oh, well, Fred didn't say anything. You know, Ted wouldn't have noticed. You know, like if they tried to call you in once you called in sick, right? Well, you would notice because you have a brain. Now, you might not say anything because you like your job, whereas I'm like, you know, that's illegal. You can't do that if you have the time. Right? Fred's a troublemaker. Yeah, Fred's the head of the state. <laughs> so I took the don't tread on me thing and I put it in my cubicle and I just, all I did was, it was only this big. It was a little picture. It said, don't yeah. tread on me as head of the state, Right. And I took pride in it because I'm like, I'm not the head of the snake. Every one of the people who work here can see the same thing. And they can see what is wrong. I'm the only one who's saying anything yeah. because if you fire me, then you fire me from the job that I hate. Whereas other people are like, please don't fire me, right? <laughs> Which is fine, but other it's not that other people don't see it. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Now, we're probably blowing our any chance of anybody sponsoring us at my former com company, but I don't think they were going to sponsor us anyhow. <laughs> right? Would you say that's fair? Mm -hmm. So, but let me let me see if I can do this. Uh, da -da 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 -da. The ban applied, because I actually wrote down the paragraph. Da -da -da. Uh, Andrew, his name is Andrew Sillick. <laughs> the executive director of the <laughs> I'm sorry. It just makes me laugh. The executive director of the conservative group Minnesota Voters Alliance ran afoul of the law in 2010 when he tried to vote wearing a t-shirt um, t-shirt adorned with the image of the Gadsden flag, which is, again, don't tread on me, uh, with the phrase don't tread on me. Um, but it says, the don't tread on me is a popular Tea Party logo. Well, I don't like the Tea Party guys. 
And the Don't Tread on Me is kind of hijacked by the Tea Party people. Okay? So I'm not here endorsing the Tea Party. Please don't put me in the Tea Party movement. Because <laughs> like I said, if I have to identify to anybody, it's the closest is libertarian. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the Tea Party, they got their own they got their own deal that I don't like. So again, you'd be like, oh, Fred doesn't like joining any groups. Right? So libertarian is basically leave me alone. Libertarians basically leave me alone. And government leave me alone. But I'm like a light libertarian because I believe in the national defense. I believe you have to tax at least some people, right? Yeah. And you have to have, you know, roads and bridges. You know what I mean? So what's uh, so what's the difference between libertarian and conservative then? Conservatives are fiscally conservative and they're socially conservative. Well, Meaning, is is a libertarian then fiscally conservative and social liberal? Yes. So they're both fiscally conservative. Yes. But here here's the difference. A libertarian says if two men want to get married and then raise... Say say we both turn gay. I know you've had girlfriends and I'm married. But say we both turn gay. And then we wanted to adopt a child. In America, we should be able to um, get married and adopt a child. Okay? Tea parties are like, oh, you just violated the covenant of God, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Whereas long version of the same story is listen. Government should not be in the marriage business. This is what a libertarian should think, okay? The state should not be in the marriage business, okay? Marriage is done by religion, okay? Mm -hmm. Whether you're uh, Christian, Catholic, Muslim, uh, witch, whatever you are, uh, me, me and you become Satanists, we're going to drink the blood of the goat, and then we're male married. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a, Satanism is a religion. Okay, now that's an extreme case. I don't really want to drink the blood of the goat with you. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What should happen is the state should be out of the marriage business. If they're not out of the marriage business, they, they should be like, listen, if two men want to get married, that's fine. If two women want to get married, that's fine. If a man and a woman want to get married. Now, in America, you should also have the right to says, my religion says... Marriage which is between a man and a woman. And that's fine. That's your religion. You should be allowed to say that. Okay? If you're a good Christian and you don't want marriage between man and a woman, then don't let men and men get married in your church. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that is where you draw the line. And I just use gay marriage because, you know, just to be comical and so make you, you uncomfortable. So you basically think government right now is far too big. Way too big. Okay. Now... I do too, but also at the same time, I mean, where would you come down on legalizing all drugs? Nope, no, nope, no. Nope. And we'll I, because a libertarian, libertarian I, if says I'm getting all where drugs. you're going. Yeah, yeah, and it's the same thing. Um, but you do not support that. No, and it's the same thing with marriage. We'll use the example. Let's say that I am a deviant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to divorce my wife, and I'm going to marry that large boulder in your front yard, and I'm going to hump it. Marry that lard ass. Yeah, no, not lard ass. No, a large boulder. Okay? I'm going to marry a large boulder in your yard. I'm going to pull down my pants. I'm going to hump it <laughs> in your yard, and then I'm going to scream, I'm married to this boulder. You can't do anything about it. Okay? That's where the line is. You should not be able to marry boulders. Okay? Marriage, man, woman. Um, man, man, woman, woman, right? Rush Limbaugh used to say, well, once you open the floodgates, and he denies he said it, but it's on tape. Once you open the floodgates to two men get married, then, and I stole that from Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh says, what's the difference between you then legalizing marriage between the horse, the boulder, um, that moped, you know, mm -hmm. and then he uses extreme examples to make his point. That's why you shouldn't let two men, well, I don't agree with that. Okay, because I met, I knew a guy when I worked at Taco Bell, and he's never going to listen. His name's Toby. Okay, I knew him when he was 16 years old. Even before he knew he was gay, I knew he was gay, right? Because he was born that way, okay? Now, 
he came out when he was in his 20s, but when I was when he was 16, I saw him chase boys around and try and grab them by their butts and kiss boys, mm-hmm. even though he was a boy, right? And I knew, when I knew Toby, that he was just born that way. Mm-hmm. He did not, nothing happened to him. That's just the way he was. So your example, we went to gay marriage, but so we're going to circle back to drugs, Okay. If you can grow it in your house, you should be able to do it, okay? So say you want to do marijuana, you should be able to do that, okay? Say you want to do the poppy seed, right? You should be able to do that. But in order to make cocaine, you have to process that, okay? You have to process the cocaine. Well, once it's cocaine, it's processed, crack. That's all processed, right? So you, cocaine should be illegal, um, crack should be illegal. You see what I'm saying? There's... There's, in the Middle East, there's a plant... When you say processed, I, I should know what that means. Well, they, but... like, mix it with chemicals and, okay. you know, run it through, right? There, in the Middle East, there is a uh, plant called CAT, K-H-A-T, okay? And they said half the population of Ye- Yemen literally goes out, grows this plant CAT, chews it, it's similar to marijuana, yeah. and they just lay... In in the desert, and then you just lay there, <laughs> right? Well, this, cat, is, this is the Middle East. Yeah, this is in the Middle East. Well, cat should be legal because you can just make it, right? Now, moonshine. People have been making moonshine in the hills for two hundred years. Mm-hmm. They should be able to legalize, or that should be legal too. But the pro the problem with like uh, alcohol, you know, when they make it or ferment it, you know, you can go blind because. It's not regulated. You see what I'm mm, saying? Yeah. So there should be a certain amount of regulation so you don't kill people with your 200-proof moonshine or 150-proof <laughs> moonshine. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So there is a line. Hardcore libertarians is like, no line! If I want to shoot up heroin <laughs> and I want to do it, I'm going to do it. And I'm gonna now, be... now, is heroin is that <coughs> is heroin processed? Yes. Yes. you got to process the heroin and shoot, get it all. So, yeah. No heroin. Basically, most hardcore drugs are processed. Well, heroin comes from what? The opium? Yeah, it comes from uh, the poppy seed. And then you take the opium out of the poppy seed plant. And like I said, if you have to make it, you know, like, uh, you know, we were talking about meth. I think they use, like, Clorox bleach as one of the ingredients. Well, no. No, you can't. I remember kids getting high. Can you use generic bleach? (laughs) I remember kids huffing gasoline, right? Yeah. And the whole thing is, is that, well, you can't not sell gasoline. Don't huff. It's not. It shouldn't be legal to huff gasoline. Yeah. Okay? But people do it. Okay? There's where your line is. If you can grow it, and everybody like, well, I can grow an extra strong strain of marijuana. <laughs> well, then go ahead. <laughs> okay? But there is a line. There, For me, there is a line. For hardcore libertarians... You know, they're like, oh, Fred Hunt, he's soft. He's soft on drugs. It sounds like you're a big marijuana supporter then. Yeah, and I don't, and the whole thing is, I don't smoke marijuana. I never smoked it. The problem with marijuana is, and I learned this in college also, is you're smoking with no filter. Yeah. Okay? So cancer, lung cancer, just flat out. It's just like, if you smoke an unfiltered cigarette, Toby, the one I was telling you about, he used to smoke the Indian cigarettes, and he goes, "It's the purest form yeah. of cigarette." And he, I'm no, like, no additives. Yeah, no yeah. additives, no filter, no nut. And I would smell that thing. I'm like, Toby, you cannot smell. That smells like it smells like you're smoking dog crap, <laughs> right? And I'm like, what, what the hell? And he said, "This is what the Indians used to smoke." Well, people, no wonder the, the English killed them. Yeah. I'm like, this <laughs> this smells like how can it's you smoke what the Indians it? And they're all dead. Yeah, yeah, they didn't die from the white man. They died from the bad cigarettes. At least the white man put processed stuff in there and put filters on his cigarettes. But I remember my great grandfather. He had a corn cob pipe, and he said, "Oh, he gave up smoking." And I'm like, every once in a while, you'll see somebody with a corn cob pipe, and I'm like, oh, they want to put tobacco in a corn cob pipe? Let, let them. I mean, it smells horrible, but you know who cares? And same thing with cigars. Cigars, I'm not saying ban cigars. All it is is tobacco leaves, right? Just tobacco leaves rolled tight. So what I am is like a light libertarian. 
It's almost like a common sense libertarian, but hardcore libertarians would be like, You should be able to do whatever you want to... <clears throat> you have to have some basic societal norms, okay? What's going on now is... And do you generally base, base that on if you legalize the harder drugs, it, it ends up affecting, you know, because their argument would be like, what I do with my body right. is my choice. But the problem is it doesn't just affect that person. It still affects, it affects family society. and society. And you're robbing your neighbor so you can make money to right. get the free heroin. And blah, blah, blah. So, again, you have to live in a society. A true libertarian would never live in a society. He would go out in the jungle and say, I'm going to make me a house and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, do it with that monkey. And, you know, I don't care if it's a male or female monkey, but see now we're, well, we worked, we worked with one or two people who probably would say they were libertarians too, <laughs> right? They would say they are, but they're not. And if my uncle was here, he'd be like, oh, Fred, you're not libertarian. You couldn't build yourself a house. <laughs> like, yes, I know. I'm not smart enough to build myself a house. I'm sorry. And that's why in society, there's certain skills. You ever you know, notice like, how there's no shortage of people who are willing to point out your weaknesses? Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that lately. Um, I had a, my sleep study. You remember I saw you saw the picture of my sleep study last night? You know, in the old days, there wouldn't be sleep studies. So people just slept and they died. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, thanks. You know, I appreciate it. So a true libertarian would never want to be on a sleep study machine. <laughs> so again, you know, but on the flip side, you can say, well, how many ho true Republican hardcores are there? You know what I mean? You know, we used the example just on the last episode when Rush Limbaugh said, you know, drug addict should be in jail, and then he's like, oh, no, no, that's not what I meant. Well, you put it on page 272 of your book. Ah, youthful indiscretion. I, I want to look that up. Because we'll I, look it up afterwards. Because I have, I have one of his books. I have one of his books, too. And I'm sorry to say that. Because, <laughs> <coughs> like I said, I think he had, I think he only had two books, I think. I think he had a trilogy. But oh, there was I think it one? was like an 88, 89, and 91. It was like three years straight. And then he was like, writing books are hard. There was a, The Way Things Ought to Be and See, I Told You So. Yeah, something like and that. And what was it like, See, I Told You So too? But the reason I liked Rush Limbaugh is, is that he was saying things that nobody else was saying at the time. Now, half the country is saying what he's saying, and the other half hates him for yeah. saying what he's yeah. saying. And says that Rush Limbaugh should be shut up. Mm -hmm. It goes back to my premise, Rush Limbaugh has the right to say what he's mm -hmm. saying unless he crosses the line, you know, and the line is gray. But you can't shut, again, they want to attack Rush Limbaugh and get him off the air. And again, the market should bear what, whether Rush Limbaugh's, you know, on the air or not. But Rush Limbaugh always used to say, you know, I never took anybody's job. He basically... And if he's in 500 markets, he took 500 jobs from, you know, crappy broadcasters. And it went to, like, the best broadcaster. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's still a little bit of, I never took anybody's job. Well, you took a lot of people's jobs. So. They they did it to themselves. That, remember that I did bargain? not. Yeah. I did not have a long... I did not have a long outline today. I'm done, but I only wanted to hit for about an hour because of the snowstorm outside. It's not a real snowstorm, but, you know, a true libertarian would shovel his way through the snow and not worry about snow plows. Again, why should we pay for snow plows? It only snows 12 times a year. And, oh. it, you, it eventually it goes away on its own. Yeah, way. eventually the snow <laughs> will melt. There's some cities in the south that don't have snow removal equipment, yeah. and they're like, well, it'll warm up in three days. We just don't have school for three days. We'll cancel work for three days, and we'll snow for five more years. And well, those are libertarian. Like Cleveland doesn't plow half their streets. and Do you, know how much it okay. Do you know how much it costs to buy salt and coli? <laughs> so, again, like I said. Um, the I, just, I just remember, and I'm sure you remember this, too, doing a route in Cleveland and you would drive like on a street that wasn't plowed. Yeah. And it would be that snow that's been run over by cars like yeah. several thousand times and it's that like... Yeah, that real icy stuff. And it, the worst place was in Cleveland where they would like 
plow two roads. And they're like, just get to these two plowed roads and you'll be fine. <laughs> And, you know, you're coming back home on rush hour, and it's a parking lot. And then your boss is like, it's not snowing in my office. Or the funniest thing is driving, like, on on a main road where one side is Cleveland and the other side oh, is yeah. whatever, Parma what? or... Oh, Parma. Parma did a horrible job. Yeah, right? well, that's the thing. I can't even but it say be, that now because they're both it would, almost as bad. It as, would be like one side. Well, Brook Park does a good job. Yeah. Brook Park, Ohio. So Brook Park would it would be like uh, one side is Cleveland and it would be filthy and the other side would be um, <laughs> Brook Park and it would be clear and you're like you know they're just not doing it in Cleveland yeah and they're like we got more roads than Brook Park <laughs> well guess what Brook Park probably has you know ten salt trucks and Cleveland probably has a hundred and half of those guys are just sitting on side roads smoking and drinking <laughs> you know the true libertarians are the you know, snowplow remover in, in Cleveland, we're like, we're going to sit here and just smoke and drink. <laughs> yeah. You can't tell us what to do. Yeah, you can't tell You can't make <laughs> us plow those roads. You can. I'm a libertarian. Yeah, I'm a libertarian. I don't, I don't believe in big government. <laughs> so, again, I'm like a libertarian light. And, again, they're like, oh, well, then you're the... The whole, the whole reason... I don't like Democrats and Republicans is they don't stand for anything anymore. All they stand for is, all they are is two big corporations. The Democrat Corporation and the Republican Corporation. They don't believe in things. And even 10 years ago, how many articles have I read in my life where they're like, can you believe that a Republican said that? And it was literally what the Democrat believed in 10 years before because their, their beliefs change by who's donating money to them. Yeah. And again, there's no principle. Now, if you want to say, I believe in communism, and you run for the Communist Party, and you donate all your money to communists, a lot of communists believe in, well, guess what? You're not going to, everything belongs to the state, and they have true beliefs. Well, nobody's voting for the communists, except for Bernie Sanders, who's a socialist. And, you know, that's one step away from communism. And I could never vote for Bernie Sanders, <coughs> because Bernie Sanders is on the road to communism. Yeah. The reason that his... The reason that his message um, resonates, re thank you, that's the word I was looking for, resonates with the kids is they say all these rich people not doing any work and they are working their asses off and not getting ahead. And they're like, well, we should get some of that and they're not voluntarily, well, guess what? No society voluntarily gives it up. But we're, it's still slanting. Everything towards the people. The, me and you literally just got done talking on the phone two hours ago. Um, we were talking about taxes, right? And what was the stat you gave me? Well, you know, they they always say, uh, you know, like Republicans or conservatives, whatever you want to call them, you know, half the people don't pay any federal taxes. Right. I don't know if it's it's somewhere around. Right, half. right. Well, well, we'll just use round numbers. It, it doesn't matter if it's 47, 49, you know, 52. We'll use a nice, it doesn't matter if it's half the people. Because, and this is the story I told the Ted on the phone. A couple years ago, I got a tax return. And I got every penny of my tax return back. So I was one of those people who didn't pay taxes. Right? But at the end of the day, I did. I gave the government, we're just going to use a round number. I gave the government $5,000. And a year later, they returned my money in my tax return. They returned $5,000. Right? Well, basically what I did is I gave the government a one-year tax-free loan. So to say that I didn't pay taxes isn't quite right. Now, you could argue that certain people don't have a job and they don't pay taxes, mm -hmm. but that's not the 50%. They make it sound like that's 50% of the people out there. 50% of the people don't have a job. They, they make it sound. That's like, the way yeah, they make it yeah. sound. That's the way the conservatives make it sound. When in reality, it's probably 5 to 8%. Yeah. We'll just use 5% because it's a round number. Well, now they're playing the politics of you work hard and those people over there don't work hard. Yeah, yeah so all I was saying is that the same people who say 50% don't pay taxes, they also say the rich need a tax cut right. so they can have more money to create jobs, which will create more tax payers right and i'm saying well they better be high paying jobs because you already told us that half the people aren't paying any federal taxes 
because they don't make a lot of money. Yeah, and you're exactly right. So those rich people better create high-paying jobs then. Which they don't. Which goes back to, it's all PR. This is why you should be a conservative, because they're trying to take your money. But then liberals on the other side say, those rich people don't do anything. All they're doing is counting their money. Mm -hmm. So the truth is somewhere in between. Yeah. Whereas, well, what do you do? Because everybody's buying into the left-right. Nobody's buying into the common sense. Yeah. And again... Everybody has their own extreme views about everything, okay? And if you shut down people's speech because of one extreme view, you know what I mean? Like, uh, okay, um, let's use Kyrie Irving, okay? Because I love Kyrie Irving as my punching bag. <laughs> Kyrie Irving knows how to play basketball really, really well. He's very good at it. And he has some crazy thoughts, okay? Now, he thinks the earth is flat. That makes him an idiot, okay? Okay. <laughs> But, Does he really think that? Yes. But he has his right to say it, right? Because that's what he thinks. He's basically saying, I am an idiot and tattooing it on his forehead. Okay? Now, but he has the right to say it, okay? Because science is not always right. They say they are right. But, you know, now we can talk about global warming, Right? Well, I am I am one hundred percent sure it is getting warmer. Okay, I am ninety five percent sure that it's due to men. Okay, now here's the problem: what percentage of that ninety five percent I'm sure that it's due to mankind? Okay, is anything that you or I do? Okay, that would be like zero percent. I'm sure that most of them. Most of the things that Americans did, you remember when you were a kid and they had the smog warnings? Yeah. They had them in like L.A. and New yeah. York. You remember having smog warnings in the last 10 years? No. No. Because America and the EPA has clamped down on usage of coal. The EPA has clamped down on emissions. They've clamped down, they've they've, clamped down on stuff. We've gotten rid of manufacturing jobs, so... They got the, the manufacturing all those, job. All the smog is in China. I remember being a kid and going to Cleveland and just coughing because yeah. it was like being in a house. When you don't make anything, then and now you go to Cleveland, it is beautiful. Yeah, because Beaut there's no manufacturing. Because there's no manufacturing <laughs> jobs, so now we clean. We up. solved. We didn't solve. We just put the problem somewhere else. Right. You know. So my question is, what can we do more? When I read. And again, this is in America only. There's more people, there's more methane given out by cows in America than by pollution. Okay? Now, what can we do about global warming at that point? We're not going to stop driving automobiles, right? We're not going to stop eating meat, right? Well, the people on the left are be like, well, you should stop eating meat, then we won't have so many cows. Again, it goes back to agenda where I would say that all the greenhouse gases are pouring into the air. 90% of it is coming from China, India, and Russia. Well, what are you going to do about China, India, and Russia? We don't live in China, India, and Russia. If you want to stop global warming, tell them to stop global warming. Tell them to have an EPA standard as high as the Americans. You see what I'm saying? So when I say... That the left is doing, they're like... Now, well, now, is that China, India, and Russia? Yeah. You said th that the majority of it comes from those countries? Yes. Yeah. Now, is that bec mainly from manufacturing? Manufacturing, coal, um, just, you know, just sending God knows what into the air when they're manufacturing. Yeah. But we used to do that 50 years ago. Well, we said, well, we're not going to do manufacturing. Well, now we're suffering because now we don't have manufacturing jobs. And those other countries, like, we prefer to make money hand over fist yeah. than having an EPA. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if we kill those poor people, we don't need those poor people anyhow, right? We're take But again, then that comes back to America in the 19 or the 1890s when we had manufacturing any everywhere. We did not care that we were dumping the pollution and killing the old people or the poor people. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All we did was take our problem and push it overseas. Yeah. And then we preached to them, well, you have to stop yeah. global warming. 
Okay, well, then okay, tell well, them to do we it. Won't make up, we won't make all your products then. Right. So then it's a catch-22. How do you stop global warming without... Now, the people in China and Russia are like, well, we're not going to stop because we want to live like the rich Americans. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we also don't care about our poor people, so if we kill them because their kids are playing in the titanium pond, right? <laughs> Then, and they're having three-headed freak babies, you know, then that is the way, that is the way of the world. You know, the poor get crapped on. So again, even global, when they say global warming is an agenda, I'm not saying that global warming is not happening. I'm saying it is happening. What I'm saying is what are you going to do about it? Cleveland is so clean that you go to the Cuyahoga River, remember when it caught on fire mm -hmm. in 77? On some days it's beautiful. Yeah. Now, on some days, it's cloudy as hell, but some days you can see through, you're like, holy cow. When I was a kid, you would look at, I remember looking in the Cuyahoga River and just seeing garbage floating down the river. <laughs> well, guess what? Guess whose river has garbage floating down it? Uh, the Yangtze's and the Urquizoy's and the, all the different like, rivers where was in that, uh, Where was that that they had the Olympics? What was it, uh, Brazil? Or yeah, or? in Brazil. And they, they said they were fishing uh, corpses uh, corpses and garbage in Rio. Yeah. And they said the rowing team came two weeks early, and they said they were watching them fish, like, not, not like little debris, you know, like plastic bottles or anything, but like refrigerators <laughs> and stuff that you just can't do in America. So, okay, we're going to solve global warming. We're going to put an EPA in China, in Russia, in Africa, in, in Zaire, in uh, Rhodesia, you know, uh, countries in Africa that don't exist, right? And we're going to say, okay, no more global warming. We're going to stop the emissions. All these other countries are going to be like, F you, okay? Yeah. Ted, we're going to wrap it up. Do you want to pick the song of the day? You want me to pick song of the day? Mm. Uh, you can pick the song. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. You're gonna put me on the spot. Oh, I'm writing on the thing and shaking the camera. Alice Stoner got back together last week for a concert. It might be their last concert ever. They say it's not. I'm not sure that it's not their last concert ever. So I am going to pick the song by Alice Stoner. Um. Let's see, Alice Stoner, what, what, what song did they play? They played Egg, because I saw it online. Look up Egg. And I, before, before we Egg go... Egg Live in 2017. Before, before we go, I, I want to um, express my grief at the passing of uh, Malcolm Young. Oh, Malcolm Young. Pick an ACD song. ACDC song sound like... I don't like ACDC. Um... Okay, uh, I don't know, Back in Black. Back in Black, okay. We'll have two songs. Back in Black. Wait, before we sign off, I want to talk about Malcolm Young real quick. Because I didn't write it down. You should have yelled at me. And I forgot about your list. <laughs> Malcolm Young. Um, Malcolm Young and Angus Young formed ACDC. Malcolm Young at 61 was diagnosed with dementia, and they said he basically died surrounded his family. It was very sad. That's way too young to die of dementia. He wasn't a football player. He wasn't an athlete. All he did was play rock and roll. Do you know? Do Do you know? Like, it, are is there a specific reason why he got that? Or? No, no. That's why I'm asking you. They literally said dementia. At diagnosed at 61, and he's been in nursing home care, and they say that he passed quietly. Yeah. So Malcolm Young, um, R.I.P. Malcolm Young, um, he was a titan in the um, classic rock circles. I did not like I did not like ACDC, but he was way too young to die. Um, someone else who's on the brink of death, he's in a medical-induced coma. Um, Manson? No, no. Well, yeah, him too. Um, 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 Sean Cassidy. Oh, wow. From the Partridge family. Wow. Yeah. Sean? No. Not, or David. David Cassidy. Oh, my I God. I said Sean. Dave, which, David? Which one was in the Partridge family? Uh, David. David Cassidy is in a medically induced coma. Wow. And the only reason I know is because in 1977, we're talking about 1977, I like classic rock, right? Like He's you. A, David is the one with darker hair. Yeah. 
Um, wow. Wait. The one that was in the... Whichever one was in the Partridge family, yeah, that's he's, he's in a medical-induced coma. I believe it's Dave. In 1977, my grandmother said... She goes, I know you like rock and roll music, so she bought me a David Cassidy 8-track tape. It was the only 8-track tape I ever owned. One 8-track tape by David Cassidy, and I hated David Cassidy, even <laughs> when I was 8. <laughs> you know how many times I listened to that David Cassidy? Zero. Zero. I never even popped it in the 8-track Do you track still machine. have it? I think it's in my ba in my parents' basement. Yeah. But is it next um, to the Odyssey machine? <laughs> no, that's at my house. The Odyssey machine. So, uh, so Malcolm Young, uh, back in black. I put back in sign. See, apparently I'm going through. Uh, <laughs> You'll be in a medically. I'll induced be in a now. medically induced coma <laughs> by next episode. So, all right. So we held that up, but uh, R.I.P. to Sean Cassidy. He won't live through the weekend. Wow. Uh, or David, David Cassidy. <laughs> I don't know how Sean Cassidy's doing. See, this is why we're in trouble. See, friends all messed up. I ain't any sleep last night. You can see I'm all disheveled. So, all right. Have, have fun, everybody.